Welcome back to the Game of Thrones mod where we accidentally almost lost the entire empire and everything we've been building up because of succession related issues and to be honest that still isn't resolved. In theory we should be able to deal with it basically instantly but there might be some issues besides that. So dear father, our our son by the way, High Priest down there in charge of the entire everything. Very very good character, like an insanely good character. Ideally, we want to play as him as soon as possible, so we've got to make him our heir first. Um, but yeah, in charge of the whole of Westeros, a nine-year-old boy. Great skills, obviously prodigy as well. His, his education coming out pretty good, willful and rowdy means he's going to make for an excellent fighter, I hope. Um, besides, what's going on his treasury? Oh, he inherited the whole treasury of our house, right? Because, of course, his grandmother, previous... Who killed her, by the way? Lord Bernard... No! Fucking Bernie again?! Bernie and Bernie was the guy that's beaten us in multiple duels, hence why we've been trying to antagonize him for years. So not only is he defeating us in, in many duels, you know, scarred our pride and our health permanently, but he also killed our mother. It's fucking Bernard. Oh, God, I'm done with this guy. Uh, today, okay, number one, fix succession problem. Number two, bloody extreme vengeance. This man and his whole family, Hal Sanders, are almost, they are in blood feud. They're, they're in a blood feud with our dynasty right now. I'm done with this. This is ridiculous shit. Okay, we'll deal with that in a minute. First things first then. So obviously we're going to accept his uh, his title of advisor. So I feel like we should probably have him out a little bit here. But our heir is currently our daughter because our title is uh, absolute cognatic. So, well, I should just say cognatic really. So all daughters, uh, daughters and, uh, and sons obviously inherit on the same level. Our daughter was born before our son. We need to flip it over to agnatic cognatic. Um... Actually, women can... Uh, yeah, if only there are no eligible males. Yeah, that's exactly what we need here. So, we need Emmon, our firstborn son, who's also in charge of the whole of Westeros, to become our successor. So, it's just a case of switching one law around, basically. Shouldn't be too difficult. We could go for just straight bagnatic, but there's not much point, is there? So, all we need is no count or higher tier vassals have a negative opinion of you. That's all we need. So, in theory, with 3,000 gold, we should be able to suit that fairly... How did we get the 3,000 gold? Is that the war with Valeria? I don't remember. Um, actually, we should be able to do this instantly, like I said. There we go. So, I'm just worried maybe if we had some rivals or something, we wouldn't have enough gold to bribe them. It would be impossible. We'd have to kill them off. But no, that should be everything we need. So, Agnatic Cognatic. Women can inherit, but only if there are no eligible males. Council don't get to vote. Boom. Now, our heir is the ruler of Westeros. There we go. Everything. Balance is restored. Now, that we can't jump over to him, can we? Um... Because we have to have, like, one domain size or something like that. So if we give away Estering, we might be able to. The question is, do we want to play as him? Leave our father in charge of the Vale. Um, to be honest, I don't see why not. We've done it before. Obviously, we did that when we played as, obviously, this guy. And then eventually, we did it with Silt as well. If you remember when Manure is still around. I don't see why not. St take over as a 10-year-old boy. That gives us many, many years to bring this kid up to a good standard. We get full control of his education. And I always, I always like doing that as well. Starting off playing characters as young as possible. I really love the idea of just leaving him around to leave his own business. Okay, sure, let's do it. Why not? So let's give away our strength to start off with then. So that's part of uh, part of Cracklaw Point. Do we have the Duchy of that? We do have that one as well. So I might just grant that out. Um, here you go. You can have Cracklaw Points. In Game of Thrones, you're not supposed to hoard titles. You can end up getting a lot of tyranny. Um, we do have our claims on the Iron Islands, which I did want to pursue, but we'd be able to pursue it a lot better as, uh, as High Priest Emmon there. Okay, fair enough. So in theory, now we should just be able to jump over to him, right? Uh, so he's our heir. And then change character. What, what else do we need? Oh, we can't do it because he's higher than a king. Wow. Okay, that explains it. So you have to have a rank lower than a king. We were able to do it last time because, of course, we made them a count. And then before that, same, we were, we were a count. So you actually can't switch over to him. Fair enough, then. Let's hope that the AI doesn't get into any uh, scraps or problems. He's still our ward at the end of the day. We can still force train and We can still make sure he's going to end up pretty decent. We just have no control of the Empire still. We are stuck as Paramount Salt. In that case, why don't we carry on with our Ironborn invasion plans, then? Why don't we stick to that and try and ensure that we are, uh, why don't we try and ensure that we're, we're bringing that on board? So what claim did we get in hindsight? Um, Orkmont, right, so we've just got Orkmont. We are fabricating claims on the Duchy of, hopefully, Harlor there. Um, 38% chance yearly, so we should have that in, honestly, in no time at all. Treasury Guard, let's, let's get everything set up and ready to go, and then we'll let some time take to try and get, grab some claims, bring this into the Empire. I think, I think it's been a long time coming here. Can we name our son our squire? I know he has to be above the age of, like, six, which I... See. Yeah, he is, isn't he? He's nine. Maybe we can't make him squire because he's, you know, our leech. That would make a lot of sense. Okay. Lomi, our... Who's also an incredibly good heir. I'd love to play as her. You get control of that, then. Okay, fair enough. Um, upgrade holdings. Man, probably not really worth it. I, th I think we could do a lot with this 3,000 gold. Should we start a colony on, on Essos? We could build up. I mean, we could potentially make... Oh, that is the kingdom of Andalos. Oh... So that is actually directly contributing to our end game goal if we colonize that. Bear in mind we need to control all of Dejour Andalos. 
Right, excluding ruined provinces, but it's a great way to start that because controlling the Kingdom of Andalos, that will give us claims on everything. So the sooner we commit that, because I assume there is no Kingdom of Andalos. Oh, there is. Okay, so being able to usurp it or anything like that's fantastic. There we go. Dar Darvez Hills. Let's set. Uh, let's, let's get rid of these ones. I'm not really interested in those. We want to hold that because obviously that will take a very, very long time to upgrade. If we give it to the AI, chance they'll fuck it up. We also want to have a better Castellan. So someone who's better at stewardship, ideally, so that they can... Uh, don't care what the council think. So that he can help improve the holding. 20% chance yearly. Oh, is it not that one? Oh, it's overseas construction. Shit. So I just pissed off my council for no reason there. Incredible. Um, there isn't any... It's, it's not one of these, is it? Um, domain improved. Yeah, it's not. Okay, my bad. I clicked the wrong one. Uh, that's just improve holding. So that one, sorry, my bad. Is that, that one is for when you right-click and upgrade holding. So I'm a fool. That, that was with these buttons, ironically enough. Um, okay, well, that's so dumb. All right, never mind. Doesn't matter. We'll still have him overseeing the realm. We can go. He can get a special tide there. Uncover plots. He can improve our domain. He can do a lot more than that other guy. Just have to kind of piss off the vassal to get him there. Okay, so you then. Oversee construction. Colony construction advances. Still 27% chance yearly. Four years, we're going to have a, a, a more advanced colony. So it's a... What is it? Uh... Colony, advanced colony, and then that's it. So it's like two stages, essentially, we've got to upgrade. So what did I say? It was like every every six years we upgraded that, or every four years? Um, yeah, roughly every... So roughly every five years, we're going to advance the steps. So in 10 years, that colony, in theory, should be finished. We'll sink our other 2,025 gold into just, well, everything else in the Eerie, because this is working out incredibly well. Uh, minus one tax. Honestly, that's fine to go for now. I'm all right with that. That's, that's a good amount of bonuses. The only problem is now, of course, we've got a Lord Treasurer overseeing the construction on the colony, so this is going to take, obviously, a very long time. My Lord, it's come to my attention. Nobody's been designated Regent of the Vale. Um, sure, we can always sack her later on. We might as well just do it for the timing. Oh, did it just crash? Oh, no, the music just ended just as it moved on to the next one. My God. How has Dawn got the rills? And more importantly, why the hell is it an inland merchant republic? Oh, it's, it's a vassal of a merchant republic who's been given that right. Got it. So a patrician's grabbed the land there. Weird. How are we doing with the war for Dawn? Uh, the war for Dawn, not like the D-A-W-N, as in like Dawn the province. Um, nothing right now. We're actually not at war with anything. High claim on the kingdom of the Trident, right, because that became independent, didn't it? So our other daughter, Jazine, got the kingdom of the Trident. We could try and unify things a little bit by killing her off, but I don't really think it's within our character. He is just, even though he is a complete nutjob pirate, he is still just at the end of the day. Just, zealous, brave, gregarious. I don't think he'd kill off his own kids like that. I don't, I don't think it suits him at all. I am, however, to claw back a little of the opinion we just lost. Why don't we start a runestone in memory of High pri pri Prince, Priest, Silt, and also go for a feast as well. I know that feasts are very expensive, which is why I've got 1,300 gold in the bank, because all the vassals will be like, oh, do this, do that, help me with my laundry, or whatever it is they ask for. So, oh, and we can go for a tournament as well. Very nice. Um, and along with that, while we're waiting to sort of improve vassal relations, Bernard. Bernard, you are done for. Send him an insult. Send him, send Bernard an insult. You have the letter for Bernard Truth Speaker, Composer, Sign It's what I just, I'm sure I despise you. You're a vile false knight, and your cruel false knight ways repulse me. Signed, Lord Paramount Salt of High House Mud. That will teach that timid filthy. <laughs> that timid filthy, that's so good. Um, right, so he's got two opinion. We could also plot to kill him. Let's, I, I know I wanted to get my hands dirty and take him out, but unless we turn him into our rival, there's actually no way to do that. Um, we'll give it a bit longer. He's 55. I do want him to die from our actions, but for the time being, there's still a chance that we could duel him and kill him that way. So we'll, 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 we'll give it some time. We might even have to flip over to like the war focus, for example. Actually, probably not a bad idea. Need to turn him into our rival, but it's going to be a long time before that happens, unfortunately. So duel burn a truth speaker. Yeah, we have to be rival or foes. So a lot, uh, hopefully with the antagonizing and the... Uh, oh! We can use uh, the, the honest recipes to uh, to make some recipes for the feast. That's quite cool. So uh, hopefully, eventually, with the insults and the antagonizing, eventually we'll turn him into a foe, and then we can kill him dead. And there we go. In memory of Silt, the woman slain by the traitor Bernard Truth Speaker. It's perfect. 200 prestige, 100 piety, raised to sepulcher as well, giving plus one diplomacy and plus five general opinion. Very nice. And we're of course also part of this tournament, which hopefully we can win. We're doing pretty good so far. Also training this random guy as well, apparently. Um. So what would be best for training up this fellow's combat skill? He's 212, so he's obviously quite experienced. Oh, he's the le leader of Potting Tower, so if he dies, Emin gets it back. I assume he just granted that out then. Um, suggest a book, suggest faking it till it becomes true, suggest immerse himself in a group. Why don't we, you know, get yourself in a group. Train with some friends. I don't think the book or the fake it till you make it strategy is, is very useful. Um, we're going to kick him out of the council. It doesn't really matter. We're not losing opinion. It's it's just, you know, whether or not we deem him to be a good ruler, someone we want as part of this council then. Um, Lomi Mud is very good. So I think we want to... Let's give her a stewardship education, and let's make sure she's getting the best education possible. She's a good backup heir. 
Oh, there we go. The Northern Civil Wars more or less ended now. Look at that. Throne of the First Man is massive. Pine Seed is currently attacking his his liege, which is why he's independent, but all of that will be part of it. Weirdly, Dawn obviously inherits, and that's probably uh, free ram inheritance causing that problem. Is Cape Wrath still independent? So that's one of the only ones that haven't been swallowed up right now. And then besides Dawn, that is genuinely, and it seems kind of appropriate given that Dawn was the last one to also be incorporated into the Iron Throne. Makes kind of sense that the Throne of the First Man would have the same issue here. Okay, my Emperor, Prince. Oh my god! <laughs> I completely forgot we have the Emperor of Valyria in our prison. Right, okay. Um, what have you got that we can... So we can only seize any of his books he's got equipped, which seems like a complete waste to have the Emperor of Valyria just take his book. We can try and break into his capital and steal an artifact, but it's just the regular theft thing. Him being our prisoner makes that... Oh, hang on. Seize valuable artifact. We could take a dragon egg. And Caligon... Like, and Caligon the Black. Dragon egg. Uh, we can't take any of those. Oh, shit, why? Uh, we need selfish, uh, selfish, arbitrary, greedy, ruthless, or envious, and we mustn't have just. Okay, that's cool to remember for the future, though. We're too much of a just pirate, so we can't unfortunately get those. Uh, why don't we just ransom him out, then, for a, a king's ransom? 400 gold, he can't afford it. How, how far is he off of that? Miles. It's, I mean, he's in negative debt. Could just, uh, could just execute him. This will up upset the rulers in Valyria. Send a message that no Valyrian aggression. Remember when they took the whole veil and cracked Law Point? Send a message to them. Random lowborn lord. I say lowborn. Random king in the Iron Throne. The highest born in, in the whole of the empire, I guess. Executes. We could eat him. We could eat the emperor of... Oh my god, we get his bloodline? The blood of the dragon. If we eat him. <laughs> um, do we get crazy cannibal for that? We're already a cannibal though, aren't we? Why can we just eat him? Because we're a lunatic? 10% chance of getting cruel. Do we become a crazy cannibal, though? Because if, if so, then it's minus 50 opinion. But we also get the dragon's blood. I'm going to do it. He's ritually slain, and then you proceed to gorge on the remains. You'll have enough raw meat to last you for days. A high valyrian will be delicious. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> That's so funny. Wait, wait, we didn't even count as a crazy cannibal. Why? Is it because we're old gods? Remember when our distant relative, Emma Mudd, spoke to us and said... You know, snap out of this iron god, drown god shit, come back to us. And now we're old, old gods. Oh, maybe we count as like an ironborn because we're an old god's heresy or something like that. I have no idea. Regardless, we just ate the Emperor of Valyria. Um, we can also release him. Release his, release his remains back to the public. Incredible. So now we have a bloodline. Oh my god, we got blood of the dragon and dragon rider blood. Now, do our children inherit that? Because uh, I assume they don't. No, they don't. So it's just us added to that. Unless we have more kids now, which point they would be. But that's absolutely hilarious. Blood of the Dragon, Dragon Hatching, Dragon Taming, and Dragon Hatching, Dragon Taming chance there as well. This would be a kind of fun if we could give this guy a Dragon Egg, then flip over to High Priest Demon. That's interesting. That's so weird. Of Bors has issued an official jewel request. I'm thinking we leave this society because we've already got the Champion Bloodline, which I think means that we can't get another one. It's also not showing how many people we've defeated, which would imply to me that that's probably the case. Normally it says, you know, when you hover over it, you've defeated eight pretenders or something like that. This, I just think, is just serving as a way to build up our personal combat. Our personal combat is good enough. And I think it would make more sense if our lunatic man joined the alchemists and, and uncovered the secrets of magic. Because we've not actually done that yet. I believe we can join if we are. Yeah, we've got the, the necessary requirements to join the alchemists. He's got the brawn. Now let's work on the brain. He's almost got 500 personal combat. Yeah, I, th I think this society serves to do nothing really but give us prestige. Set up a championship. Oh, right. We can do that, can't we? Should we, should we upgrade like uh, the Eerie to, to a heavy infantry championship or something like that? That could be kind of cool. Um, and apparently, you know, you don't get many... I, I was reading a post by Soulborn on Discord who said that you don't really get many pipemen anyway or something like that. And unless we really focus on getting those cavalry buildings built as soon as possible, we're not getting too many cavalry. So it makes sense, even if it is a minus percent to that, to just go all out and build like a melee championship. And seeing as we've got that power, I kind of want to do it now while we've got it. So is that it? Is that the highest one? Melee P3. Yeah, melee P championship. It also gives... So 0. Point, oh. That actually doesn't give a lower troop count. So it's 0 0.5 taxes, but it gives 50% infantry, 25% heavy infantry morale. That's really good. So hang on, let me just double check then. I wasn't making that up that the next level gave us... Oh, so the next level gives that. Right, so we can build the championship and then one of each of the other buildings and get all the bonuses without sacrificing any. There we go. Jousting, melee. So it's, we're costing a lot... Of, we're spending a lot of tax on this, but that's a crazy amount of bonuses we're getting, especially from that one. Wow. Enticing the best heavy infantry to join the competition. 25% heavy infantry morale is so cool. That's that's what we needed. Now, I assume we can't upgrade any of the others, too. It's just one championship, right? 
There can only be one championship per holding. Right, got it. I just wanted to double check there very briefly. That's cool, though. That's a huge amount of bonuses to our heavy infantry. Question is, then, if I go and leave and join the Alchemist, will we lose that? There's only one way to find out, obviously. I don't think we will, because they're provincial modifiers. Yeah, we've got them permanently by the looks of it. Very cool. So now we'll join the Alchemist, and we'll try and uncover the secrets. So you might remember, very early on in the series, someone uncovered the secrets of because summoning wildfire beasts, another one uh, covered the secrets of alchemy. So I think that still exists within the society. We have to learn from one of those people who know that, and then we ourselves can can use those powers. There we go. We've, we've leveled him up. Uh, when can we join it? We need to uh, we need to wait until the 4th of first month, so the 1st of, 4th of January next year. So we've got a few months yet. Oh, that's cool. The strict exercise regime you committed to after your decision to become a legendary warrior has made you one of the toughest persons around. We gain in fit condition. No idea what that was from. When did, is that from the war focus? Maybe I don't know. I feel like I can lift a small house. And I, I'm still modest after all this. Health plus two for five years. Obviously very, very nice. So if we fall ill with something quite tragic, we could probably survive it. Personal combat skill plus ten as well. I believe that puts us... Uh, well, I mean, when it unpauses, eventually we'll be up to, like... After this tournament as well, we might cross the 500 threshold. This tournament's been going on for a very, very long time. I skipped over most of it, but we are in the final rounds here, and this is what's going on. These jewels take a very long time because we're obviously massively skilled. We're probably not going to lose, but so are our opponents. And because it's a melee, it's, you don't really want to be murdering people. Doesn't matter if you do, but of course, if you do, it'll be dishonorable. If they die accidentally, that's fine, but you can't actively kill people like that. Is there another jewel? Uh, ah, your ability to take down any man in a brawl is widely renowned. Many speak of your prowess and how it would be unwise to pick a fight with you. Good. Good to be recognized. And another jewel. Good God. Oh, we have defeated everyone who stands before us and left a winner of the melee. I got honestly felt with you. Honestly, the amount of clicking that went into that four. I thought I put, I, it felt like I was there. Extreme immersion. I was in that melee right there. Finger has never hurt more. Your ability to take down any man in a brawl is... Yeah, we know. Thank you very much. All right. 7,700 prestige, though, for a guy who's 38. It's actually really, really impressive. Uh, it's over. We have won. And we've also built our big iron mine in the area. Good time next. Now we start working on some other stuff as well. Um, garrison size plus 20% is quite good. Castletown, just for the tax income, is not too bad. Obviously, there's the weird butcher, which gives plus four tax. But the amount of other losses is too massive, isn't it? Um, household guard. We need to obviously make the household guard before we do that. Rented warehouse is pointless. Hanging gardens. What do we need for that? Gardener or architect? Oh, that's really cool. Tax income prestige. Apple tree orchard. We need some seeds. So that's where we have to go on the adventure. Um... Dragon Tower, you need a dragon egg. I've never built one of those, but they look awesome. Secret Tunnels, what do we mean for that? Craven Shy Paranoid. And then the Carved Throne of the Eerie. Oh, I guess we need to be an Aaron or something. The Aaron Lords of the Veil, long sat on a throne carved from the Weirwood. The same white color as the snows that carpet the Giant's Lance. Yeah, can't do that, unfortunately. That would be really, really cool, though. Shame we're not an Aaron. Maybe we also have to... Yeah, I was going to say, we've already got the Eerie. Uh, it's obviously not a shame we're an Aaron, given that they were traitors. Um, okay, interesting. Why don't we go for... Just a generic upgrade for the time being. Maybe something that allows us to upgrade something else. Something and just go for like a really boring modest taste. Give us a decent amount of troops anyway. We could actually join the Citadel as well. But I think for the time being, we will go for the Alchemist Guild. Just because the Citadel, you know, it gives us a lot of knowledge. Gives us the ability to pick specializations. But the Alchemist Guild gives us magic. Which at this stage, I'm a big fan of. Um, and now we can use... So transmute metals. There we go. So if we, we need to learn alchemy though, don't we? Um, an alchemist to court has the power of transportation or we learn the power of that. Cool. Acquire ingredients. Obviously, we do that as soon as possible. I assume we've got... Uh, oh, cancel that too. Got the option to donate to the guild. I'm going to do that as frequently as possible because it's a really good way to get... Oh, wait. Lomi is part of the... What? Society member Lomi is offered to help with gathering ingredients for future studies. Is it because she's our squire? Very weird. Um, fine, we'll go hunting in the forest. She seems like she could uh, she could handle that. Oh, nice. We get to pick another leadership trait. So we've already got the highest level of uh, of light... Uh, so, sorry, heavy foot. Why don't we go for light foot alongside it? Granted, I would prefer like direct leader or something like that, especially for a guy with 38 marsh on 408 when personal combat. Having him on the center, on the vanguard would be pretty imperative. But, I mean, light foot as well. Light foot hand, and heavy foot dealt with, with the same guy. Just makes him an incredibly good all-round commander wherever he is. You know, we might occasionally get the better commander given some of the ridiculous martial scores these characters have. What are we missing here? Oh, right. Um, Chief General, let's get you training children then. She might be able to. I'm not sure, but she might be able to train up Emin. I guess he'd be in our court, right? Being tutored by us in the area, right? So she should be able to also train him, I would hope. Can we not force him to train? I guess just in case we accidentally kill him, huh? And he is our ward. I don't know why that is. Oh, it doesn't matter too much. Maybe it is because he is. Why is he possessed with Clubfoot? Oh my god, has he, has he been using the dark powers? I think he's been using dark magic and it's corrupted him. Oh my god, there's no other way he could get Clubfoot, is there? Fuck me. Emin, what have you done? We're going to end up playing as like a fully corrupted child if we're not careful. Great. Lord Paramount Salt Mud, I invited to part... Oh, another tournament. We'll do it because we've got our honours to uphold and we're a mighty warrior. But my god, they take so, so long.
I saw my mortal enemy as soon as... Who is it? It's not Truth Speaker, is it? No, it's not. Um, it's Lord Dermot of Wycliffe. Who? <laughs> who? Who are you? Just to go with dislike. Is he our rival? He's not even our rival. We can challenge him to a duel, though, while we're also at the tournament. Here we go. We have defeated Sir Byron in a joust. Member of House Royce there, by the looks of it. Coward. Okay, next one. Yorick Templeton took the full force of your lance blow. We've never actually won a uh, jousting tournament, obviously, because we're not really a, a, a trained knight or anything like that. We gained a diplomacy. That's cool. Holy shit, we actually won. Regional tournament wins won. Uh, bloody stone master, get out of here. I, I closed it. But more to the point, we've actually won. That's cool. What have we got then? Dancing with death. All right, yeah, giving us the, the minus health. Yeah, very nice. Uh, that was from Bernard Truth Speaker Sounders, whatever the hell his name is. Regional tournament wins won. We've got original tournament second place won. We're respected. Very cool. And then a grand tournament second place won. And then a grand tournament third place. We've got like one of everything. So what is that? In so grand tournaments. Oh, if the crown is... That makes a lot of sense. So that one was hosted by a duke, original tawny, the blue crown, gold crown for the, obviously not that one, but uh, so yeah, original tawny, and then that was your, your grand tournament, or that one's your grand tournament, hence the, the crown for that one. Interesting. Suddenly, I understand. Okay, we've got intestines. It wasn't for the tournament, I promise. That was unrelated. Why not? Why don't we hire an alchemist? They, they can train us, and we need a local representative who has a high opinion of us before they'll offer us some quests. Um, oh god, we don't, we're not really that good a, an alchemist, are we? Like I said, too much brains, not enough, or too much brawn, not enough brains. I say that, though, we've got prodigy, but nothing, but no martial, no, we haven't got, like, a, oh, we've got brawny, we haven't got, like, strong or anything, though. Um, okay, fair enough, not that it's helping out too much there, so learning plus ten, diligence plus two. It's gonna be a long time before we make our way up through the society, unfortunately. Why the hell do I have to fund this? Oh, because he actually hasn't got any... What have you doing with all your money as well? Good lord. What quality of education would you like to purchase for your son, High Priest, Emon Mud? Um, sure. I mean, obviously, we're going to spend the most possible there. He's, he's coming out pretty decently. Still not a fan of the magical corruption. He did get indolent, which is pretty bad. Besides that, all the rest of his traits are pretty good. So, obviously, willful, uh, brooding, rowdy, and conscientious there. All of which are very, very good. Indolent is terrible and generally works against most education. His traits are quite nice as well. It's going to be a bit higher and maybe not intrigue-focused of all things, but... Never mind. Um, does it indolent work against a martial education? I actually don't remember. Um, can't check now because the game is being annoying. Um, oh, we actually just can't check at all. We'll have to wait for the next kid to come of age. Yeah, that's frustrating. I, as I recall, it does. I think indolent does work against a martial education. Otherwise, he'd have been a great scenario with Rowdy and Willful. Oh, there we go. Without the prestige and presence of Fighters Guild, the various tournaments you would have mainly lost participants. They, they no longer exist. Right, so we've lost our... Oh, that one's been downgraded. And we've lost all the others. Oh, that's annoying. So we've just got like... All the heavy infantry, but none of the... I hope that one disappears as well, then. And we lost Gregarious. Great. That's just that's just fantastic news. Angry will make a fine warrior. Uh, understandable, really. We haven't had any claims on the Iron Islands, which was going to be my plan for expansion, because we have nowhere we can spend it. We can't declare any wars or anything. Um, no claims have developed on the Iron Islands, despite the fact we've had someone with 38% chance. I mean, I might take her off and replace her again. Maybe they bribed her off or something like that. Put her back in there. Um, and also, a colony has not developed at all. So, really, we've just drawn the... <clears throat> like I was saying, our colony has just developed, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, that's great news. So how long until... Is that still the same odds, I assume, of upgrading from an advanced colony to a full one? It is. 44% chance yearly. Very good. Ah, there we go. This is what we've been waiting for. So we can finally build an alchemist guild in the Eerie, then. And this is sort of a semi-persistent thing. Build the alchemist guild. Take all the time you need, and then... Unfortunately, it's not like building a lab or anything in the base game with the uh, Hermetic Society. You just have to sit here and wait. Oh, we can go out there and try and become a gardener? Um, yes, we shall. Look for a quiet place to rest. I'll go to the garden. Oh, you actually don't get gardening, do you? No, I remember now. You just... Okay, chance of us gaining Lustful. Do we actually gain Lustful or do we just gain Lover's Pox? That's annoying. Um, I thought that gave you Gardener or Lustful or Lover's Pox. Maybe because we've already got a lifestyle trait in the form of Duelist. And we're also fashionable? I have no idea. Well, that's a bit annoying. Finally, Lordship of Harlow Hill. Unfortunately, it's not really what we're after there, but it is a claim in the right direction. So the question is, do we leave it there to try and get the... The duchy, which I assume is the same chance yearly, or do we send it to one of the other provinces? And I don't know if it's the same chance. I think it's only possible. So, so from what I recall, uh, bearing in mind this was ages ago, I actually looked into the files to check this. Basically, any characters above, say, so I, th I think it was like 20 or 18 diplomacy have a chance of fabricating a claim on the duchy. I think that's all there is to it. I think the actual chance of them fabricating a claim on the duchy is the same. So if we leave her there, we've already got a claim on Harlow Hill. So the only one she can fabricate now is the the duchy claim, right? We'll leave her there, maybe. I was just thinking if it is a lower chance to fabricate the Dutch, it actually genuinely might be quicker to move it to those other two provinces and try and take the whole thing. We'll try and get as many claims on the whole of the Iron Islands and then push them maybe when we get old and we're about to die or something like that. Oh, looks like the Westlands actually might be beating us to it there. But um, yeah, we'll give it a go. We'll try and take apart Dutch by Dutchie. Boom, there we go. 
Time of investment has paid off. The colony in Darves is complete with a self set of, uh, sorry, self sufficient domain of the realm as it was once many years ago. Uh, becomes Veilman and Faith of the Seven. What the fuck? It takes on whatever your capital is rather than what we are. I guess because we've used them to. Oh, that's not. I can't even proselytize because, of course, we're a different religion. So he is. Oh, he's also our religion. Fine. Ned, get to it. Um, that's frustrating, isn't it? They'd be a completely different culture and religion. Ugh. Okay. Um. So now we're potentially also risking a rebellion. That's annoying. So we can start fabricating, or not really fabricating, but... Uh, oh, this all counts as Andalos. Because it's not Bravos yet. Right, that makes a lot of sense. So De Jure Andalos is actually kind of massive. Um, and it's also independent right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Can we declare war? Border disputes. Uh, we can't, unfortunately. Otherwise, that would be fantastic. Um, what do we need for that? We need to be... If we had Ambitious, Ruthless, or Greedy, we could start ripping apart Andalos. We don't have it. Um, that's really annoying. So we'll have to keep close on that in the future. Maybe tr even try and get Greedy, because that could be awesome. Just being able to rip this apart while it's out from under Valyria. Granted, we still need to go to war for like, this part of Andalos, well, at least Andalos. But we can start colonizing some of the other provinces as well. Well, Paramount Salt, the realm is in a state of war. Oh, good. What have you done this time? Um... The first man I'm born to show war over the Iron Islands. Yes, okay, never mind then. Forget I ever started fabricating claims, of course. To defend my legions, my duty. He's decided to sack us from the council. It's just the mega war system. Don't worry about it. Like we've said, he's got his problems. Okay, so he's going for just the whole of the Iron Islands. Yeah, he is. Look, it's, a, it's an empire level claim. Very cool. We need to do nothing to help that out. I think we're just going to sit here and wait. We've built our alchemist guild so we can focus on this side of things. The underhanded, we can, we can focus on the explosive, the siege power. That's much cooler. Um, oh, make wildfire? Do we really want to start making it yet? Maybe if we do end up going to war with Valyria, like, we ourselves might go to war with Valyria to, uh, we can work on this while, uh, while our, our liege, our son, this is why I kind of like having this duality to our government system, so our heir, obviously running the main things, the warfare, unifying the realms, tying up the borders, the, the vassals, whatever else, because the heir is just better at handling a massive, massive whole continent's worth of troops. Whereas we can do all this underhanded stuff that the air, the air would never think of doing of, like colonizing, building up a little bit of a beachhead over here, then attacking into Valyria with wildfire and whatever else bonuses we can get. This is cool. It means we can focus on the endgame goal while they tidy up all of our other goals that we still have to try and knock out at some stage. All right. Um, um, you know what? We're going to need it. Dragons have dragons have fire. We need fire as well. And at long last, my lord and patron, Lord Paramount Salt, we thank you for your continued patronage of the Guild of Alchemist as a sign of our trust in you. We'd like to offer you the secrets to making wildfire. Thank you, Wisdom Yorin. And now we just learn how to make wildfire. Now, this depends on your learning, I believe. We're obviously a, a genius to some extent. And there we go. Easy as that. 200 knowledge. Now, that also means we can, just about to say, rank up in the society. All you need is 750 knowledge or 500 or whatever. But mainly, you need to just know how to make wildfire. This is going to allow us to start learning the magics, the, the power of the wildfire, the power of transmutation, etc. Some of the other rare things as well. Um, oh, my nephew? I thought it was my son then. Who do you marry you off to? Uh, some random daughter? Who the hell was she? Hang on. Excuse me. I wanted to... Or not. Thank you, game. That's fine. I was done looking at that screen anyway. Good. Uh, my son. I don't think we can go back to that game. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, who is she? Hightower. Oh, that's a pretty good marriage. Well done, AI. Look, son Terracotta Mud is uh, Ironborn. Excuse me. Demand religious conversion. Can't. Um... Diplomacy for you, then, I guess. Whatever. We'll spend the money on him. Because, again, I, I want to make sure that everyone in our identity is as good as possible. Just in case we get any assassinations kicking off. Which I imagine with the realm as big as we are, might be the case. What? Claim the whispers. Oh, shit. That is against me. You're right. Oh, it's actually just against me. Valeria declared war on us to take this province here. Okay. Um. Wow. Thank God we started making wildfire. Because God knows we might need it at this point. Okay, fair enough then. Um, what we'll do is... I can't believe Valyria. Just because we're part of the Mega Wars, now Valyria can go to war for just us. That's so unreal. Okay, get these guys together. That's probably how the Veil fell last time to Valyria, if you remember. Get these guys over in... Actually, I didn't want to put them there. I wanted to put them closer to the actual war goal. So move them across the Bay of Crabs there. We'll keep about 4,000 troops over there. That way they should be able to repel any sort of boat bomb force. Um, we'll drop the rest of our boats now. We don't really need any more. Okay. Um... Sure, everybody on the center. Let's get him leading all of our troops with a mass amount of bonuses we get. This should be okay. Obviously, we've repelled Valyria previously because the AI is just awful with, but just terrible with boats. So this gives us a very nice advantage. Um, you want to buy my eyeballs? Please, sir, I've only got one to spare. Fine, okay, whatever. Oh, our son is 15. Um, honorable, authoritative, brave, gregarious, just? Holy shit, Wow. Well done, High Priest. I'm shame about the uh, the demons in your brain and the clubfoot and the indolence, but that's okay. Um, we've got a stockpile of wildfire. Now, bear in mind, if we build a massive amount of uh, wildfire, we might just end up blowing up the Eerie. But I'm just going to keep doing it. 
Build more. Build more and more and more. We're, we're going to use it against Valeria. And we're a lunatic, so I think it's completely on brand. See, this is going to make it so easy. They're coming in. Low morale. We've got our 16,000 troops there ready to pounce. Um, they want us to attack Dawn. Any other time, I'd have said yes to that, because obviously they're one of the biggest thorns in the side of a unified Westeros. Uh, but for the time being, we've got our own we've got our own people to fight, being the whole of Valyria. Not a dragon rider. Good to see. I, oh, they get a trade, don't they? My cat will aid me. Go, cat, go. He was overwhelmed by my cat's immense strength as I strike him with a body charge. And he's dead. Great start. Is that a good commander? Yeah, we just got off an insanely good commander. Genius, tall, 24 marshal. Excellent work. And the master also emboldened troops. Yeah, I'm sure killing their Balerian commander didn't help out with that. And this guy's running away because he's a big coward. Wouldn't be surprised. If you saw this guy <laughs> just spin his cat around by the tail and throw it like a bolus at you. That's so good. Lady Jessamine sent a skillfully... Of course, whatever, Lady Jessamine, of course. And Terracotta is too soft. Doesn't really make much sense. Give it his name. Oh, we can try and conspire against Bernard Truthseeker. 40% chance the plot succeeds. Did I not? Oh, I did invite people to the plot, but it's quite a low chance to succeed, isn't it? Um, send some gifts out just in case this will... I mean, I mean, might fail, but probably will fail, let's be honest. So invite him to the plot. Send him a gift. He should be invited automatically, but I'm just double-checking here. Let's go for it. <gasps> it worked! The conspiracy against Bernard Truthspeaker. We can't duel him. He's, he just ended up liking us more and more, despite the fact that I keep sending him insults. I've had him on Antagonize for years. Antagonize just doesn't work, it looks like. Um, we've done it. Fooled by the fabricated evidence I've sent him has risen up against his liege. That's so good. That'll do. That's not quite the revenge we're after, but it might mean that he can, uh, my son can act in vengeance. You know, he's got, the, he's got law on his side now, given that he's gone into rebellion against him. I'm going to keep our troops over in Hartzom, actually, because they seem to be dropping off a lot of troops there. And honestly, it's much closer, closer to a lot of these coasts. Right, there we go. Um, 38%. I mean, uh, the war goal itself is well defended. I'm going to put a couple of commanders on here, but... Yeah, I mean, this is, um... It's going to be a very easy war if all they're doing is just dumping... Oh, he's sending troops to the sisters. Come on, don't do that. That's so inconvenient. It honestly looks to be a trap, huh? Small wide file stop by. Very nice. Um, let's get all of our boats together in... Let's send them all over to here. Because what I'm going to do is... Excuse me. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh... Oh, it's 107 men. Keep the boats up just in case we do need to get over to, say, the sisters, or just in case we do need to very quickly get down to here, because it'd obviously be a lot quicker to boat over than go all the way around the Riverlands. My liege, I believe that one of your vassals, of course, we'll do nothing for now, because, you know, I think we've got enough shit on our plate, like the war with the Iron Islands and the war with Valyria, before we actually worry about those guys. How much? It depends how much gold, I guess. Oh, we're still massively in positive tax, so I, I think we'll just leave the boats up. There we go. Your young son has finished his education in military strategy and command. I noticed with pride he's named nothing left than a masterful knowledge. Except all of that that I just said in rather... Oh my god, he got good traits as well. So when you become, by the way, brilliant strategist, you automatically get given two leadership traits. Similarly, if you're a level three strategist, you get one leadership trait. You got siege leader and organizer. Both of which, for the fight against Valyria, seem incredible. Outrun their dragons and also be able to knock down their gigantic walls. Very cool. And then that, along with honorable, authoritative, brave, gregarious, just and trained fighter. He's a great character. And we've groomed him. And what's his wife like? Terrible. Oh my god, she's awful. We might have to do something about that. As as his father, I would I would say that's just terrible. We're gonna we're gonna help you deal with that one. Oh my god, and the Wolf of the Dawn. The wildlings have unified under Magna Gorn. Uh of Magna Gorn Magna Hornblow, that's that's kind of appropriate. We would staff with him as well. So he's obviously part of the Oh, he's just inherited it. That's kinda cool. We're gonna have long this weirwood staff has been passed down the wildlings for. It's like hundreds of years, probably since the campaign began. Very cool. Okay, uh, they should be able to rebel that, I'm sure. I'm sure we won't, won't worry about it too much. I think Valeria comes first rather than a bunch of wildlings. Oh, there we go. Oh, and my son's wife's about to die. Yeah, this is what we're after right here. Right, so chase those guys down as soon as possible. Uh, they are very quick. Have you got an organizer or something there? Okay, he's gone. Um, angry? You're not coming out very well, are you? Oh, yikes. Okay. <laughs> Marshall. That's 250 gold I'd rather not spend. Sorry, Angry. We've got enough good kids already. You are just an investment. I can't be bothered with that. Um, the hard assassin did not get a chance to push her off the walls. But we can try again in the future. Then I'll restrict my son's marriage or maybe even suggest one for him. Because he's obviously not very good at this. Yeah, I thought they might do this. So rather than chasing them down when they've got a clear advantage on us, they must have an organizer there themselves or something. Because they're moving with incredibly hick speeds. We're going to get on the boats and just cross the... Oh, they cr crushed our other army. Not a big deal, to be honest. Whoa, that knocked off how much war score? What the fuck? 26% because they killed 4,000 troops. I've killed more than that. What the hell are you talking about? Unreal. My god, this guy... 
Honestly, the calculations in this game are nuts sometimes. Right, uh, let's go and pick up our other armies very, very quickly. With our guy in the center there, we should still be safe, even if they do declare an... Uh, uh, or even if they do go for the attack. Okay. That's unreal that they got that much war score out of, of such a minor conflict. Right, kill them all. So I expect to go up by... I mean, if that was, what, 35%, I expect to go up by like, at least 60% war score. No, of course not. Because why would I? Stupid. Stupid game. I hate it. This is getting out of hand. They are sending a lot of troops now. They sent troops from Volantis too. It's a problem with the wars against Valyria. We have to be fast. And unfortunately, they seem to have some pretty good commanders right now. Um, in fact, just standing them there would make more sense. That way, if we need to cross this area, we can just bounce on the boats and bounce straight back off. So do that instead of... Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, there we go. Um, get these guys... Oh, they're going to do the same thing. Can we cut them off? We might just be able to catch them, but if not, we're just going to have to put those troops back on... No, I, think, I don't think we're going to be able to catch them. Fuck me. All right. Fine, there we go. This is why I kind of want an organizer instead of, like, heavy infantry leader, but never mind. All right, come on then. Go for your war goal. Oh, no. We killed her, but we were caught. Is he annoyed? Oh, shit. Demands vengeance. Desires kind of uh, usurp title. Did we? I don't think we did. Send him a gift. I'm sorry about your wife, but it was for the good of the realm. Um... No, oh god, what have I done? An artifact. My son. This spear. This spear has been handed down our family for generations. Was destroyed. Because he already had one. Does that count as... Oh, we didn't get the bonus out of it, though. What the hell? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. We just destroyed our spear for the fun of it. My son. This... This... Shade of the Evening has been passed down our family for many generations. Thank you. He accepted the gift. That should still give us the... Oh, so annoying. All right. Um... There, is he okay with us now? Minus 15. Chances are he's not going to kill us dead, but that's a start. Um, damn it. It was for the good of the realm, my son. I'm so sorry. God damn. Okay, never mind. All right, get those troops together. Let's kill off these. Surely he wouldn't throw us in prison as we were trying to fight off the whole of Valyria, would he? That would be madness. Get out of the way. I'm trying to watch the battle. Right, there we go. 54%. Those were... Oh, High Lord Shpifalor. But if he's going for that, there's no point. We might as well just let it go because he's, he's going to get that in his war anyway. Um, that's frustrating, huh? Right, there we go. Uh, the, the cat died. So it shall be set in the garden. They'd love to play there. My poor cat. Okay. Uh, they've got another 6,000 men in hearts. I'm gonna try, and um, once again, we're sending more troops over. We might as well just hang around before those guys have come over. Then we'll send the troops back over in that direction. Have we got anyone we can, we can hire, like mercenary bands or something? We can raise these guys. Okay, it's not enough, but I might even hire some troops as well. Otherwise, we're just gonna be going back and forth and back and forth over and over, and it's never gonna end. Um... Here, give me, like, give me, like, three units of... That'll do, right? And then merge those together. Put our guy in charge of this army with two good commanders as well. Just because this is going to be a much closer battle than, like, 14,000 versus that many. Then put our second best commanders on this one. So Humphrey, Lothar, and Martin. Incredibly good commanders as well. Right, that way we can hopefully kill two birds with one stone. They're attritioning down, which is going to give us an even slight, a slighter advantage there. Um, Terence and Humphrey on that one, then. And then we'll move... Oh, God, okay. Lothar on the center and then Conrad. Not very good, but again, they outnumber them by like 4,000, 5,000 troops, so we should be good. I'm going to have you improve relations with my son, whose wife I horribly murdered. Okay, uh, oh, he's annoyed because I haven't joined the war. God damn it. Because we just haven't helped out. We're in a war against Valyria, what do you mean? Haven't, uh, fuck off. Okay, right, this could be a more tricky war then. Uh, it's going to be alright because they've got no commander. Their, their center is strong, but obviously nowhere near as strong as us. Boom, there we go. Chase those guys down. It's a good amount of war score because they're his personal armies there. Then with that other battle down in the south, we might actually be close to ending this. Um, yes, yeah, so let's bar bury these old sour memories. He's forgiven me. I was relieved to hear that he's ready to forgive me for my past behavior. Murdering his wife. Thank you. He knows that I did it for the good of the realm. I, th I think that's fair. I appreciate that. All right, so that army is dead. 92%, very good. And then with this, that actually might be enough to end the war. 97, come on. God damn. I, I assume they're going to give us a mountain of cash for this as well. So the chance are to pay for our mercenaries. Um, they will give us 700 gold and 150 prestige. And he loses the claim on the whispers, right? So we never have to defend it again. That's, that's probably the best part of it, to be honest. Boom. Get out of here. Done. We have won. Congratulations. Okay. Um... Now we can go and help out with the, uh, we can go and actually help out with the war on the Iron Islands and stop pissing off our leaders so much. So let's drop this higher troops. Um, we'll get, we'll, we'll get as many men on the boats, but I'm not going to hire any more boats to transfer this army. I think 12,000 probably be more than enough, especially with us leading it. Right, let's split these guys down. And then with that, we've, we've secured our position in the Alchemist Guild. We've built up a stockpile of wildfire. We defeated Valyria again. And we're going to take the Iron Islands. Today, the, the progress has been massive. Now we get the mission to build an office, like in the base game's Hermetic Society. To be honest, I sent these troops over here. There's really nothing we can do, because everything is already sieged down, slash in the process of being sieged down. And there it is. 
The Iron Islands also incorporate into the Iron Throne, and then hopefully, when all the realms come back together, we'll see some real, real nice pro... Uh, or maybe not, because maybe the realm is in the, and the Westlands are in their own wars again. Okay, that's frustrating. And of course, oh, I imagine anyone who joined the, the Call to Arms against the Wildlings are still splintered. We're not going to go and help out with that war, I'm afraid. Well, that was fun. Okay, so we've got the... The Iron Islands are now under the Empire as well. All that's missing is Dawn and then the rest of Andalos, which we can carry on with our colonization. So why the hell not? Great progress. Honestly, at the rate we're going, we're going to have proven first man control over all of Essos, Andalos, Valyria, maybe within a couple of episodes. And then the campaign will have, uh, we, we will have succeeded. Didn't even nerf the Andal calling people to arms as well. So that, that gives me a little bit more bragging rights, I think. But thank you all for watching. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made this series possible in the first place, even if the patron houses have been massive asses this entire campaign. Thank you to Alchemia, Anthony Goli, Asuna Kirito, Upmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Ben Hoffman, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Doolan of Gondolin, Fukuna Vasquez, Frederick, Gogol, Sarik, Harry McGowan, Nicky Wana Squad, James Shea, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kaden Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Nostrus, Necrofin, and Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Scott, Skaz, Smegmastain, Somnus, Shea, Teabag Cruz, The One Ring, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McLam, Bacchus, Bacchus, Faragon, William Green, and Zazzy7011 for their support, the insane tier lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well goes out to Uwu Daddy, Asaro, Adam Person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anchor, Attila, Austin Taylor, Betamus Max, Bet of Learn, Black Double H, Blood for the Blood God, Boyan Gunn, Chris, Gorgie Circus, Dapper Go, David Van Diepen, Daniel Pete, Don, Don Hodding Thomas 7, Emerald Beam, Foosh, Gabriel Van Ders, Gads, Genji Zerka, Gothamo, Gray, Haji Damar, I am Sagittaire, I see the Great, Jackson P, Jay Lehrer, Jacob Wolfie, Jason Sushu, Jose, Jeebus Crust, Euron DeVries, Jessica Smith, Jilp's lucky sister, Jilly Vondel, Joseph Beard, Justin Plot, Justin Rules, Justin Walters, Lepus, Luana Thomas, Luke Wallace, Manuel Bossich, Mastolp, Monty, Mosey Sampson, My Name Isn't Dio, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Organized Confusion, Pan Samu, Panthapel, Peyton Denisar, Rush Nolagart Billionaire, Ryan Hooper, Sam Keir, Shardul, Shari, Smirt One, Smooth Octopus, Socrates, Super Nanny 089, Sweet Sea Talar, Voodoo Mumbo, Void Prince Kiwo, Will Wade, Wilson Atef, Wolfie, Yellowfor, Yorkus, Zach, Zetlock, and Zico 2. Thank you all for your support. See you tomorrow.